Hello and welcome to my video on biodegradable polymers. In this video I will answer the following questions. What are polymers? What are biodegradable polymers? What is the chemistry behind biodegradation of polymers? And what are the disadvantages and advantages of biodegradable polymers? Polymers are large molecules made by linking together repeating units of small units called monomers. One analogy for polymers is a paper chain you would see at a child's birthday party, where each ring of paper corresponds to a repeating unit in the polymer chain. Two examples of polymers with one repeating unit are polyethylene and polylactic acid. When polymers are drawn shorthand, the repeating unit is drawn in square brackets, with the letter N to symbolise the unit is repeated n amount of times. It is important to understand the distinction between repeating units and monomers. Whilst the structure of the repeating unit is seen in the polymer chain, the monomer is the small molecule the chain was synthesised from originally. Polyethylene is formed from addition polymerization of ethene, whereby other molecules of ethene are added across the double bond. This can also be called chain growth polymerization. Another type of polymerization is condensation polymerization, in which alcohols and carboxylic acids react together to form an ester, with elimination of a molecule of water. This can also be called step growth polymerization. As you can see, the lactic acid monomer has an alcohol group at one end and a carboxylic acid group at the other. This allows it to polymerize in this way. All plastic objects are made of polymers. Polymers are very important materials for modern life, as they can have a large range of different properties for a large range of different applications. For instance, in a student's backpack, there will be various objects made of polymers, such as ruler, mobile phone, pens, rubbers, water bottle, lunchbox, and quite possibly the bag itself. Polyethylene and polylactic acid are both polymers that can be used to make food and drink packaging, such as plastic bags, bottles and wrappers. However, polylactic acid is biodegradable and polyethylene is not. Chemo-organotrophic microorganisms are organisms that use organic substances as carbon, energy and electron sources. These organisms can assimilate organic molecules and break them down into carbon dioxide and other molecules. But in order to assimilate a polymer, the chain length must be small. Mn is the average molar mass of the polymer. The average microorganism is able to assimilate a polymer with a molar mass of less than 4000. However, if the molar mass is greater than 4000, the organism will not be able to assimilate the polymer and will not be able to break it down. In non-biodegradable polymers, the polymer backbone is unreactive and the bond is strong. Therefore, it is difficult to break down into shorter chains. However, in biodegradable polymers such as polylactic acid, there are reactive groups in the carbon backbone, such as es this ester group, which can be hydrolyzed to make breakages in the polymer chain. Ester hydrolysis will take place under alkaline or acid conditions. In alkali hydrolysis, the polylactic acid molecule is surrounded by aqueous base molecules, such as sodium hydroxide. In step 1, the negative oxygen in the hydroxide ion acts as a nucleophile and is attracted to the delta positive carbon atom in the ester group. This carbon is delta positive because it is bonded to two electronegative atoms, which pull electron density away from the carbon. The bonding of the hydroxide ion pushes the pi electrons off the carbon and onto the oxygen atom, giving the oxygen a negative charge. However, the negative oxygen is attracted to the delta positive carbon atom and therefore will donate its electrons back to the carbon. This causes the carbon oxygen bond in the polymer backbone to break. Once broken, the negative oxygen will pick up the delta positive hydrogen in the OH group of the carboxylic acid. This forms a carboxylate ion which can bond with the positive sodium to form a carboxylate salt. In acid hydrolysis, polylactic acid is surrounded by protonated water molecules. 
For simplicity, I am going to focus in on one ester group in the polymer chain. In step 1, the oxygen acts as a nucleophile and donates one of its lone pairs to the delta positive hydrogen in the hydronium ion. The OH bond in the hydronium ion donates its bonding pair to the oxygen, neutralising the positive charge and forming water. We now have a positive charge on the oxygen, which can be delocalised onto the carbon by movement of a pair of electrons in the carbon-oxygen double bond onto the oxygen. In the next step, the oxygen in the water molecule acts as a nucleophile and donates a lone pair of electrons to the positive carbon atom. We now include the oxygen in the backbone of the polymer. As previously, oxygen picks up a delta positive hydrogen. The bonding electron pair from the OH bond is donated to the positive oxygen, neutralising its charge. The carbon-oxygen bond breaks and a lone pair is given to the oxygen to neutralise the positive charge. Finally, the polymer backbone has been broken. However, a carbocation is not a stable molecule and carbon likes to have four bonds. So, we add a water molecule, which will be protonated and allows the bonding electron pair and the OH bond to be donated to the carbon. The products of acid hydrolysis are a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. Note that we formed a hydronium ion in the last step, therefore the hydronium ion catalyst we added has been regenerated. Once hydrolysis has occurred on enough ester bonds in polylactic acid, we start to form molecules with a molar mass of less than 4000. These molecules can now be assimilated by chemoorganotrophic microorganisms and broken down into CO2. Once the whole chain has been hydrolyzed into low mass molecules and assimilated, biodegradation is complete. Now I'm going to talk through the advantages and disadvantages of biodegradable polymers. Biodegradable plastics have a lot of potential for short use products such as food packaging, especially when plastics are dirty and therefore difficult to recycle. However, it may not be as simple as chucking your plastic packaging on the compost with all the other food waste as different biodegradable polymers require different specific conditions and different specific organisms in order for biodegradation to take place. One big advantage of PLA is that the lactic acid that is polymerised in its synthesis can be derived from renewable resources, such as starch. This means the CO2 released into the atmosphere during its breakdown is cancelled out by the removal of CO2 by the starch as it grows. However, not all biodegradable polymers will also be carbon neutral in this way. One outstanding disadvantage that means that biodegradable polymers will not be suitable to replace all current plastics is that they are not suitable for long-term uses, such as durable clothing, as the reactive groups in the backbone of the polymer will eventually react and break down the item. Whilst the degradation of polymers such as PLA can be altered and prolonged by changing its material properties, such as chain length and optical purity, the chain will eventually be hydrolyzed. Overall, biodegradable plastics are one way to prevent build-up of plastics in landfill, but they cannot tackle the problem alone. In order to minimise waste overall, long-term plastics should be used for longer, and the individual should make an effort to recycle short-term plastics as much as possible. Thank you for watching. I hope you have learnt a lot and pledged to do your bit to increase the health of our planet.